So for those of you who are in my class, there are a few things that we have not yet covered that you will need in order to complete your data project. Uh, the first is putting together your summary statistics table. Uh, this is easy to do in Excel, and I will give you some pointers that will make building a good looking table both fast and efficient. To begin with, we're going to start off here on the home page for the course. I will go into content and grab the Kentucky County Income Per Capita data file. And I'll go ahead and grab that. We will be working in the data analysis tool pack. If you have not added that, you will need to go back and see the video that will tell you how to install that. So the first thing you want to do when looking at your data is determine what the dependent variable is. You will want that on the left hand side of all of the X variables, which are also known as your right hand side variables. So for the purposes of this illustration, I'm going to go ahead and make meet and household income, the Y variable or the dependent variable or the left hand side variable. Uh, so I've got that on my leftmost column of my numerical data and I've got uh, all of the X variables on the right hand side. What you'll want to do first is to scroll through the data to make sure that there are no missing observations. If, for example, one of the observations had a missing value for a variable that you definitely wanted to include in your project, you would simply eliminate that observation uh, from the data. Now, in, in, a, uh, in a project that was professional, uh, there are there are systems for handling these things, but because this is your very first regression project, um, that is how we'll handle it given our time constraints, etc. So to begin with, here's your data. The first table you want to put together is your summary statistics table. Um, we'll go ahead and do that at this time. So we'll go to data analysis and we will look through here for descriptive statistics and we'll say okay. Now it's asking you for your data. I went ahead and clicked the input range button and I will select all of my numerical data starting with my dependent variable. Hit control shift over and while holding control shift hit down. Notice I've got the headings in the first row of data. So labels in the first row, new worksheet. We want summary statistics. That's what we're trying to put together here for this particular table and we'll say okay. Now, uh, Excel is pre-programmed to spit out this hideous table with a kitchen, a kitchen sink of summary statistics. We don't want all of these summary statistics. And also we wanna clean this table up a bit. So what we will do is we'll go through first of all and get rid of the summary statistics we don't want. Uh, we don't need standard error. Uh, right click D. We don't need the median mode. Um, there's no reason for us to have variance if we have standard deviation. Also I'm not interested in kurtosis or skewness for the purposes of this project. Uh, we will keep minimum and maximum so there's no need to maintain range. Um, some also is unimportant. I would like you to keep count and hopefully count is repetitive. In other words, hopefully you have um, the same number of observations for each variable. Now another issue with this table is its repetitiveness. Uh, you can see the labels of the statistics uh, are the same all the way across the row. So we're going to clean this up a bit. Go ahead and um, right click in cell A1 and say insert and shift cells right. What this will do is uh, it will put the name of the variable above the values for the particular statistics for that variable. And after having done that, we can go in and clean out these repetitive labels. What I like to do as a uh, means of formatting is to go ahead and leave these rows in between my different variables make them a cell width of one and you can also 
go ahead and reformat all these so that they're of the appropriate size for the labels. And we'll talk about labels in a second. By removing the underline in these between columns, we'll establish some separation. So under the home, we can go into the borders button and clean those up. Uh, so this is starting to look pretty good. As you can see, we've got a great deal of variation in terms of the number of decimals. For the purpose of a project summary statistics table, two or three is plenty. So we'll go ahead and give this um, a couple, and that, that ought to do. Also, when you have large variables, you want to go ahead and give those a comma to help people read uh, what's going on in those particular cells. A lot of this is up to taste, and your tables should differ a little bit you know, based on the, the size of the variables and uh, the number of dependent variables. I will give you a heads up that one alternative for this table is uh, really easy to put together, and that is to do the following. Simply copy the table and then um, right-click and say Paste Special and say transpose. And what that's going to do is go ahead, it's going to go ahead and make the variables your rows instead of your columns. And then all the statistics will be spread across the columns. And this may be a format that you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and grab the, the uh, format painter and just clean all this up. And again, you know, you can straighten up your decimals and probably center and format these. There's no reason to have standard deviation written out. Uh, standard div is fine. And min and max are also pretty universally understood as substitutes for minimum and maximum. And the same is true of your other variables. Feel free to shorten your titles. Um, you may want to go ahead and tell the reader what the abbreviations stand for if it's not absolutely clear. For example, total pop is a fine substitution for total population. And median age is pretty short. Percentage, uh, percentage, no high school diploma and percentage, you can get rid of the population, 16 or older. We'll make fine so let's do this 16 plus with with job and that's pretty readable and we can clean that up within the text of the paper. Also again you know, to kind of pretty this table up. I'm right clicking and hitting I to throw some separating columns in here. And then I'll go ahead and hit Control, highlight all of these separating columns, and reformat those to be cell width one. And then to give this a little more separation, I'll go back and throw in an underlining border. All right, so this is a pretty good looking table. I kind of prefer the look of this one. Uh, I might set, center these up. Uh, but other than that, everything looks pretty nice. Um, it can be a problem if your numbers are right formatted and your titles are center formatted because they can lose track of each other in the final table. Resizing the cells by double clicking on the separator of the columns will fix that problem. So everything looks pretty good except um, where we've got unnecessary separating columns here. Probably with such a small table we, we'll just go ahead and fix that manually.
and we may want to give you may want to give these a little width for readability's sake that looks pretty good of course you'll never know what it's going to look like in the final table until you put it in word the way that i like to do that is simply bring in your word document and copy and paste. One important note, uh, the paste method that I'm going to show you works best if you go to the view tab and hide the grid lines. There they are. Okay, I'm gonna click on the window and hit the window key and write. And then I will go ahead and grab this, control C, come over here paste special picture. Now you've got a table that, that's fairly attractive. And I, I, admittedly, you could clean it up quite a bit, but it's very readable. It looks like I forgot my commas. That stands out right away to me. Let's go ahead and delete that and fix that error. There we are. And again, if you want to make sure that everything is fitting in, you can simply double click and it will automatically resize to the minimum. All right, control C. And we'll go over to our Word document, paste special, enhanced metafile. And there's a nice table that you can add a title to and, and add a discussion below. Yeah, you may want to keep in mind that you should have your font in your table match the font of your document. Um, and uh, that's a quick example of how to put together a summary statistics table with a couple of options. One, of course, being the format that we used and the other being the format that separates the variables by columns as opposed to the summary statistics by columns. And we never did finish cleaning this up, um, but it would be a fairly simple thing to do. So if you, have, you got lost at any point, feel free to rewind, pause, restart the video, or bring questions to class or all of the above. And that is the first table that you will need for the project, uh, your summary statistics table. And my hope is that you will discuss what it is you see in the data. For example, you might talk about uh, in your data description uh, what the median household income is uh, between all the Kentucky counties and, and what that might mean. Uh, you could talk about the total population uh, average or perhaps the minimum and maximum for either of those. Uh, the minimum median household income is 15,000 where the maximum median household income is $63,229. You might talk about the counties that those fall in. Um, also, the median or min and max median age, that's fairly close as you would expect. The percent with no high school diploma, uh, there's a great deal of variation between the minimum and maximum. Uh, one thing you might talk about is, uh, for example, is the Kentucky with a, or is the county in Kentucky with the highest median household income the same? as the county with the highest uh, or the lowest percentage with no high school diploma. Um, and you could have the same type of discussion when it comes to the percentage 16 and older with a job. Anyway, this is the first of three videos that uh, will discuss the tables needed in the project. Feel free to bring any questions you have to class.